So to start, we're going to look for the uh, location of the SFTP server on the server. Now, classically, this is slash user slash lib slash SFTP dash server for Debian-based distributions, or slash user slash libexec slash openSSH slash SFTP dash server for Red Hat-based distributions. But to find the exact location, we'll go to others, uh, command shell. And for the command, we're going to do find slash user minus name SFTP server and execute that. And here are the two versions of SFTP server that it found on, on our uh, uh, server. It should be pretty safe to use either one of them. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to run another command, echo, and then we'll copy and paste that right into there, and echo that into etc shells, which is going to tell it to add that server that we just found into the system set of shells. Perfect. Now, just to make sure that worked, let's do cat slash etc slash shells and make sure that uh, our SFTP server is in there. And here, as we can see, it's now the last uh, uh, shell in the list. So let's close others and let's go back to users and groups. Now, when we go into Isaac, we can modify the shell to be slash user slash lib slash SFTP server. As a matter of fact, for future users, we can do this uh, from the beginning. So now we're going to save the users. Um, and now user Isaac should only be able to connect uh, to the server using uh, secure FTP. So let's take a further look at this. So to test this out, we're going to use SSH to connect our brand new user to the server. Let's see what happens. Well, first thing is this standard warning, uh, which people who are used to SSH should be used to seeing. Uh, it's not really an error. It's just asking us to confirm that we want to trust this host and add the key to the, the SSH registry. So we're going to select yes. And here's our window, and let's type in our password, secret. Now, as you can see, the, we got the message of the day. The system seemed to have logged us in, but we're missing our command uh, prompt. We don't really have a command prompt because we're actually inside the SFTP uh, program. Okay, now we're going to try the same experiment using an SFTP client. Uh, I chose to use FileZilla. Uh, so we're going to go, and I already took the liberty of making a profile for this. Uh, please enter a password. And the password is going to be secret. And here you can see that we did connect. Uh, and we have our home directory uh, and everything we'd expect to see in a home directory. Uh, we don't have www directories or CTI bin directories or mail directories or anything else, which you might be used to seeing uh, if you come from uh, the world of shared web hosting. Um, and we could just as easily set up the server to make that initial directory structure. But um, getting back to our subject, we're going to create a www directory for now, which isn't going to go anywhere because there's no web server installed yet, but uh, we'll have it in place when we have it. Uh, and this will demonstrate that we can actually use the server. Uh, so we're going to go create directory, make the directory called www. There it is. And we can even move a file into there. Great. So. Uh, in today's lesson, we talked about how to set up a secure FTP server uh, on your dedicated server. Uh, the software to do it is almost definitely going to be pre-installed. We didn't talk about it because we shouldn't have to talk about it. The same software that, uh, th that allows us to use the SFTP server is the software that allows us to use SSH. Since 
every single dedicated server that you're ever going to get is going to include SSH, unless it's something that you're hosting yourself. Uh, you know, they have to give you SSH, otherwise you can't manage it. Uh, we could safely assume that this software package is going to be installed properly on the server when you get it. Uh, now, there are a number of other options, which I mentioned at the beginning, which we did not go into. Uh, one of them was setting up your own FTP server, which is really easy. Um, and another option is using a method other than FTP. Uh, so one example of the method would be going into your webmin control panel and going into that others drop down. Uh, and there's there's a drop down there, uh, there's a menu item there, which uh, file manager, uh, which is basically a Java applet that'll run in your browser that'll uh, also work as an FTP. Um, that's not so scalable because it doesn't work well for other users. What can be done though is that there is a user control panel which is uh, which goes hand in hand with Webmin, and it's called Usermin. And you can uh, look at that and your at your Webmin uh, configuration menu. You'll see an option uh, for Usermin, and the first time you go there, it'll automatically install Usermin for you. And then all you have to do is set users up. Um, using the add users and groups the same way we did it today. Um, and those users will be able to use that same file manager, but from inside their userman control panel, which means that files that they upload and download will be done using their own credentials. Um, you still have to be careful about uh, limiting their shell access, though, because uh, they, they will still have full access unless you do it otherwise. That's not just an SFTP-related thing, that's anything. Uh, there are several other options, but uh, they don't fit into the scope of, of uh, today's lesson. Uh, but if you're interested in, in learning more about that, I highly suggest you get yourself a copy of the Linux dedicated the, the dedicated server handbook, uh, Beginner's Edition for Linux, uh, and you can get that at www.thededicatedserverhandbook.com. Uh, so that's it for today. Next time, we're going to talk about how to set up the Apache web server on your dedicated server. Uh, until then, this is Isaac, and have a great day. Bye-bye.